wa barikhu inna khair al hadisi kitabullah wa khair al huda wa huda muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam wa sharra al umuri muhdasatuha wa kulla muhdasatin bid'ah wa kulla bid'atin dalala wa kulla dalalatin fi nari a'adhan allahu minha wa iyaakum jami'a amin my brothers and sisters in islam we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for his endless bounties and favors towards us uh, as we always say allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happened to be so kind so merciful to us uh, he is showering us with his bounties and his favors day in and day out uh, to a point that if one were to leave everything to just said i am going to sit down today and make sure that i will highlight or underline each and every single favors kindness bounties from allah upon me you will not be able to do so <clears throat> however we as a muslims we see out of all those countless bounties and favors the one that stands out the most is the fact that he happened to guide us into worshiping him into islam at least he help us to know the reason of our very existence In human beings you can get everything else you can become everything else if you don't know the reason of why you are on this earth something is missing and something is missing but if you know why you are here to start with that anything else that may be missing those are just secondary things you can catch up on them later on but if you have everything and you still do not know why you are here you haven't got much because whatever else you got it they are temporary they will eventually go away you will die be buried in the grave you will face your creator then you will answer him yeah so for the fact that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided you and i to know why we are here that is the number one blessing which we cannot thank allah enough for it but we will just try to do our very best all right we know that he will accept that from us we'll ask him to continue to guide us which means to keep us on the straight path uh one of our brother i don't know when i mention his name you will know uh, uh muhammad bilal we haven't seen him for a long time i hope he's still alive may allah continue to preserve him if he is not may allah forgive him and have mercy on his soul he said imam usman i have been to uh us navy or whatever vietnam wars i was there he said that when a commander or head of the military team or group gave you an order he said go ahead and take off take out that bridge that link these two city together go ahead your assignment is to take out that bridge and when you come blah 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 he said in a very simple way you come you fly in you want to you destroy the whole village you come back you said all right commander i want to destroy the whole village you were like great did you take out that bridge Well I went and kill every last person great but did you take out that bridge That was your number one assignment whatever else you did doesn't matter we told you to take out that bridge He said that's 
That is the assignment that given to us by our commanders. He said, whatever you do, it doesn't mean nothing. You fail in your mission. The point was just to take out that symbol bridge so that you can disconnect two villages. Maybe the reason so the other village can starve, they can die, good. But we did not tell you to do that. And he said, if that's the case, whatever else you do, they will not accept it from you. And you may even be, be punished for that, sanctioned for that. And he said, if Allah created you, and he didn't ask you for nothing more than to recognize him as your creator, you fail to do that, you come back, you say, Allah, but I was so kind to others. Well, Allah, but I, you know, I used to give people food. Yes, good, 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 good. But did you recognize me as your creator? He said, if we human beings will not accept that from one another, if you are sent to do something you do other than that, that's not acceptable to us. Do you think that would be acceptable to the Creator? It shouldn't be. I said, yes. He said, okay. I'm, I'm a veteran. I went to. So since then, I said, you know what? I got to become a Muslim. And when I become a Muslim, I put one and one together. I know that it makes sense. Anything else someone will do, if the person did not recognize Allah as his creator, his intelligence is deficient, is lacking. And alhamdulillah for Allah to guide you and I to become a Muslim from get-go, that's a blessing. But my brothers and sisters, which is greater than that? Right. I feel like I was blessed. My dad was Muslim, my mom was Muslim, and all my brothers and sisters, they were Muslim. So when I came into this life, I do not know nothing else but Islam. So I just go along with the flaw. But which is greater than that, I'll tell you. Come into this life, your mom is Muslim, your dad is not a Muslim, your friends are not Muslim, right? Wife, husband, they are not. Your children, your friend, those whom you went to school with, none of them. The society is not a Muslim, but yet Allah happened to choose you, to handpick you, to select you, to say, hey, come on, I'm going to get you out of all this group. I'm going to show you the Islam. That is greater than mine. And you are ten times more blessed than I am. I know people see it the other way around. You know, we think like, okay, I am a first class Muslim, and then this guy is a second class Muslim, and the other one is third class Muslim. We have a tendency to feel that way. Maybe we don't feel it, but it makes us feel that way, All right? But in the reality, that's not the case. And you might say, you know, uh, I think a few weeks ago, uh, one of my young daughter sent me uh, something. He said, Imam Usman, can you look into this? I looked at it. Is that true? I said, what? Someone was saying, yeah, you converted. You can even say Shahada. Uh. <laughs> I said, come on now. Don't worry. She's just telling you how much she know. She doesn't know any better. So don't make that makes you feel bad. All right. I was born Muslim, I was this and that, I said, it's nothing. You are better in the eyes of Allah than her right now. But we had that notion to think if you are a convert, you are lesser than the one who was born Muslim. That's why it created another problem. We ran away from convert now to revert. No, 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 we are all Muslim from the beginning, so I just revert. No, no, no. Say I'm a convert, be proud of it. I wish had this matter was left up to me to be born a Muslim or a convert, I'll select the second one. Because I haven't really done nothing, brother. What else could I have been? What else? Father is Muslim, mother is Muslim, there is Muslim, the entire community is Muslim, you are sent to Islamic school. Had I raised to do the other way around, that would have been difficult, almost impossible for me, because that's all I know. I haven't absolutely done any efforts, brother, anything that can be highlighted. But if you in this society, 
Allah chose you, you accept that to become a Muslim, you are entitled to be a poor than me. By Allah, anytime I stand with a convert, and I look at them, I look at the sincerity, and if they try to recite the fact that they are not able to recite it, I feel embarrassed, I feel so low. I feel like, oh, subhanAllah, it's like when you got a torch and you turn out the light. They, they cannot even recite the Fatiha, but still they are there. The father ain't happy with it, they hang on to it. The mother, yes, I'm still doing it. Brothers, yes. Husbands, no, I'm still taking it. The whole society is against them. So the last person should look down on them is that Muslim brother or sister. If I had that, then Allah is better than me. Anyway, we'll leave that. Don't take this from me. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said, way back, six, seven, eight hundred years ago or more, he said, وَمَا يَظُنُّهُ بَعْدُ النَّاسِ أَنَّهُ مَنْ يُرِبَ عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ وَلَمْ يَكْفُ قَطٌ أفضل ممن كان كافرا فأسلم وهذا ليس بصواب. He said that wrong notion which many of us have thinking that someone who was born Muslim, raised Muslim, and never experienced the proof of the disbelief is better than someone whom was not born Muslim, but later on accept the Islam. Thinking like the first one is better than him, that is a wrong thought. That is a wrong concept. That is a wrong notion. Al-i'tidaru bil-aqirah. Ayyuhuma kana afdalu. Afan. Al-i'tidaru bil-aqibah. Ayyuhuma kana afdalu fi aqibatis. Afan. Ayyuhuma kana atqa lillahi fi aqibatihi. Kana afdal. Ibn Taymiyyah said, which counts is the end right now as we are speaking to each other. That converted brother and sister and me as we are speaking. Who has more God consciousness in him than the other one? You do it, then you're better than me. I do it, then I'm better than you. It has nothing to do with how soon you got it. It's now as we're speaking right now in a minute. الإبره بالعاقبة أيهما كان أتقى لله في عاقبته عاقبته هو أفضل. And this he said, I tell you من المعلوم أن السابقين الأولين من المهاجرين والأنصار الذين آمنوا بالله ورسوله بعد كفرهم بالله ورسوله. أفضل من من أولادهم وأبنائهم الذين ولدوا في الإسلام. He said, I tell you, look at the first group of the companions of Allah's Messenger, those that are called as Sadiqun, that have accepted Islam later on. Take Abu Bakr if you want. Take Umar if you want. Take Osman if you want. Take Ali if you want. Aren't they all convert? Yeah, we may not know more about Abu Bakr, but I don't think if there's any Muslim here who knows a little bit about the, the history of Islam, does not know that Umar used to drink. Right? Some will even say that anytime you think about how he used to see the women and others, he felt bad. Good or true or false? They are all convert. They were not just non-Muslim, a lot of them even fought Allah, tried to fight against the Prophet Who can tell me that he didn't hear about Khalid bin Walid? How many blood, Muslim bloods, was on his hand? But once, later on he became a Muslim, all of his children, those that were born into Islam, are anywhere closer to him. So thinking like you are just a convert will make you less a Muslim? No. Any Muslim who think that way, he just doesn't know much about his deen. And he said, this is a fact before our eyes. And that's true. That is true. 
Those that took this Islam on their shoulder and took it to the whole world so the, so the point that I was born a Muslim, they were all convert. If not, 95% of them were all convert. So I just want to clear that part out. So we can move on. And he went and gave us, this is, uh, that's what we call uh, the, the textual evidence. This is a fact you can read in Islamic history. All right. But let's leave that. He said, بَلْ مَنْ عَرَفَ الشَّرَّ وَذَاقَهُ وَعَرَفَ الْخَيْرَ وَذَاقَهُ قَدْ يَكُونُ مَعْرِفَتُهُ لِلْخَيْرِ وَمَحَبَّتُهُ لَهُ وَمَعْرِفَتُهُ لِلْشَّرِّ وَبُغْدُهُ لَهُ أَكْمَلْ مِمَّا لَمْ يَعْرِفِ الشَّرَّ وَالْخَيْرِ And he said, I'll give you again another fact. Someone who happened to know evil, and not just that, and he tasted it, he lived in it, he experienced it. As we said in America, I lived it to the fullest. All right, I've been there, done all that. And later on, you present the good to him, and he happened to see the good also. And that person can make a better judgment in between two lifestyles. And that person can, his eagerness towards the good and his hatred towards the evil can become more comprehensive, more perfect than the one who does not know the both lives. And you can see that also with your eyes. Those who converted into Islam and we that were born into Islam, we tend to be more lenient, more light, more soft towards the Tahiliyyah. Because we just don't know it. But these brothers who have been there, done it, know it, how detrimental it can be, how harmful it is, how bad it is. They don't play with it. Because they know he ain't meant to be played with it. And there's none good in it. They know it. That's just before our eyes. You don't need to go too far. You don't need to dig it too, too deep to see that it's just right there. And that's another fact. And if you don't know evil, you may fall into it out of ignorance. Or maybe if somebody's doing it, you won't resent to it that much. Uh, come on, you're just making things difficult, bro. You can't let it play with it. But they know it, they pray, bro. I've been on that street. I was in the club. I even spent some time in the jail. All right. So I'm going to make sure that I protect my kids. I'll make sure I protect them. Because I lived in it. I know how bad it is. I'm not going to take a chance with their life. But I will be more soft, more laid back with my son because I don't know how bad that street is. I don't know what it can lead to. All right. I haven't been to the prison system here, so okay. But someone who has been there, you can see them. So we we'll just leave that in the side, inshallah, to make that part clear. So you are blessed. And I will say, I wish I was a convert. By Allah, I mean it. Because I see that you have done more effort than I do. May Allah give us a better understanding. Now, those who are born into Islam and those who have been to convert into Islam, we are all blessed. We just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us, whatever it takes for us to preserve that blessing. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to unite our hearts in addition to uniting our bodies. Allahumma amin. Aqulu ma tasman. Wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa risal muslimina min kulli dhambin. Wa astaghfiruhu inna hu huwa laghfurur rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa la aqbal al muntaqina. Wa la aduana illa ala zalimin. Now my brothers and sisters. Out of Allah's infinite bounties and mercies. He knows where human beings will make mistakes. And sometimes we regret, and we want to correct those mistakes. And if the matter was to be that there is no way to correct it, we'll be in trouble. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a second chances. All right. All right. If you make a mistake, you are in trouble. You went against the order of Allah. He said, okay, I give you a way out. You can erase all those sins. You can. All right. So look at the five fundamental pillars of Islam. Each one of them is good for that. 
Islam is built up on five pillars. Sah wa la la. Alright. It has the five fundamental pillars. Number one is a shahada to testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and to testify right now that the Muhammad is the last and final messenger of Allah. When you take your shahada, what will happen? Allah will forgive you for all of your past sins. Sah wa la la. And the second, this is for those who are not yet Muslim are considering to become a Muslim. The minute you will make this declaration, then all of your previous mistakes, sins, will be clear with your Creator. Alright? I don't know about the, uh, the legal system of America. That's a different story. But in the eyes of Allah, you are clear. You are like a newborn baby. All of your errors and mistakes in the past, God forgive all of that. Now one, five daily salats. If you pray in between, whatever sins you commit, they'll all be closed out. All right, that's the second pillars of Islam. The third one is to give zakat. And the same thing. خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَحِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّهِمْ بِهَا Your zakat also is a mean for Allah to clear, to purify you. And the fasting again, if you fast the Ramadan, which is the four pillars, Allah will cleanse and forgive you for all of your past sins. And the last one is a hajj. We are in seasons of the hajj. You go for hajj, Allah will cleanse out all of your sins. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us. Now I'll go back to the first point, which is the shahada. There are some common mistakes we make when it comes down to shahada. When a brother or sister become convinced that this deen, she wants it or he wants it. Once you have a notion, you know, I think Islam is good. I think, just jump into it right then there. Don't delay. Don't wait. Don't think. Get into it. Don't wait for a sign. You know, in a Christianity, we will wait for some sign to come up. No, that's a sign. The fact that you start to think about it, that is a right way, that is a science of God to you. Take your shahada and figure out the rest. When we say shahada, make your declaration of the faith. Let others know that I am convinced that the God is the one who deserves to be worshipped and Muhammad is the messenger. That's it. When a sister come to you or a brother come to you, don't delay. Don't say it next week. Don't say it. We do it a lot. It's not right things. A man come to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They were getting ready to go fight. He came prepared. He said, "Okay, since the fight cannot wait, let's go and we fight. Then after that, then I will take my shahada." The Prophet said, "Oh, wait, 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 hold on." Take your shahada first, then we'll go and fight. Then he took his shahada, they went and fought. Then it so happened that he got killed. And the Prophet said, Amila Qalilan. He just he happened to do a small amount of the work, but Allah reward him tremendously. When the bird is here, have him make wudu, give him shahada, then we pray Jama. I don't know if you get it. As I was coming, the brother said, Imam, okay, somebody want to take shahada next Jumu'ah so that he can get married to this sister. Uh, I said, why next Jumu'ah? So because we, I don't know, I thought that you won't be here. I said, oh my, subhanAllah. Call the brother now. Is it so complicated? Is it so difficult? It's nothing. If you don't speak Arabic, fine. Go to stand up here and let people know that I now accept that no one should be worshipped except God, Allah. And Muhammad is the last messenger. That's it. That's all it takes. Imam doesn't have to be here. You have to put a bill on hold for one week. The Prophet also put the army on hold for the guy to take shahada. Do you get it or not? Whatever you have it that makes you a Muslim, give that to him and you make him Muslim. That's it. Unless you doubt on your own Islam. If you don't, say it whatever language, whatever way you can say, say that to him. And if you want to come on Friday for us to hug him and say Allah Akbar to make him feel more welcome, we will do that. But don't put the person Shahada on a hold because the Imam is not available. 
And if you want to take shahada because the sister says he cannot marry her unless let him take it. A lot of time we will interrogate people to, is this something that you really want to do? It? Are you ready for it? Are you prepared for it? Brother? Forget about all that. That's not up to you. That's not up to you. It's a wrong nation. A good sahaba come to a lady, a sahabiyat, she said, I want to marry you. What did she say? Let's look like what? You are such beautiful and handsome guy and very popular in the community. Someone like you, the man, will not be rejected. But the only thing that I can marry you that is stopping me from marrying you, I am a Muslim, you are not. And the man said, I'm going to double the money. She said, and how about money? He said, I'm going to triple it. I told you it's not about money. It's just because you are not Muslim. Once you become a Muslim, that is a good enough for me as a mahar, as a dawi. The man said, yes. The lady said, yes. And guess what? He ran to the Prophet, I'm here to take my shahada so I can marry her. The Prophet gave him shahada. Do you know who that is? Abu Talha. Abu Talha. You know who he was marrying? Umm Sulaim, the mother of Anas. The mother of Anas. Anas been married, the one who saved the Prophet ﷺ 10 years. Her mother, or sorry, his mother. When the father passed away because she took the shahada, the father did not want to take the shahada. I mean, husband. When the husband got killed, then she didn't get married. When the Prophet came to Medina, Umm Sulaim went to the Prophet ﷺ, everyone else is giving you something as a gift. I don't have nothing, but I have my son. I will give it to you so he can save you. So Anas worked with the Prophet for 10 years. That's a different story. But when Abu Talha went to marry Umm Sulaim, Umm Sulaim said, no, it ain't going to happen. Why? Because you're not Muslim. He tried to increase the money. She said, no, I told you, you are so handsome, so beautiful. All other women in this city will want you to marry them. But the only thing that I'm not marrying you because you are not on the Tawheed. And he went to the prophet. Prophet didn't say, do you really mean it? I mean, are you doing it because of Islam or are you doing it because of Umm Sulaim? He didn't say none of that. He didn't say none of that. When Abu Talha got to the prophet, much to the prophet, so, 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 and I can see the Islam on his forehead. That's so he welcomed him. He didn't interrogate him. I know that he said it's because of, brother, this hadith is so clear. You don't need no interpretation for it. So stop all that interrogations. Just give a shahada to him. Pray for Allah to touch his heart. If this is not enough, do you remember the man whom he was cornered by two Sahara? That was in a battlefield. He was killing the Muslims, he was taking them down, left and right. So two Sahaba cornered him, and he knew that it was over with him. What he said? He said, Ashhadu Allah, ilaha illallah. They still killed him. He can be cured in that. When they come to the Prophet, the story was related to him. He said, why you killed him after he said the shahada? He said, but Prophet, he wasn't convinced. He just said it out of the fear that I won't not, so I won't kill him. The Prophet said, no. No. So, don't go further than what you see. Take it that right in there. The Buddha said, we want to take shahada. I mean, do you, do you, are you doing because of money? Let him be because of the money. Let Allah deal with him later on. That's the same notion this Sahaba had it. He did it because he wanted to save his life. The Prophet said, no. That's what Abu Sayyid al-Khudr used to say. Lam umar an 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 I am not ordered by Allah to dig into people's heart. Alright? So let us not turn them away. Let us not put it on hold. So I tell the brother to call the brother. The brother says he cannot make it. So come, take shahada. If the sister is the one who encouraged you to do, Umm Sulaim has encouraged you, Abu Talha. Do you remember Abu Talha is the one who gave a garden to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Do you recall it? Alright. So it's, it's Allah. It's Allah's deen. He presented to us, so so don't stop them, don't put hold on them. And the brother and sister, the minute you have this notion that Islam is good, take it right in there. Don't wait, don't procrastinate it. 
is a good decision. Is a shaitan that will try to hold you back. The Prophet said, Man arada al hajja wala badri bil amal saliha. Try to hurry up to do the good things before one of these five things undertake you. You can die at any minute. You don't want to die, meet your Creator. While you have everything else recognized except Him as your Creator. That's not a good ending. So, inshallah, I hope these points help. Now, we want to take shahada. But I say it with whatever language you speak. If I am Bambara, I will say it in that Bambara language. If I don't speak Arabic, that's okay. We will work on that later on. Right? If you speak French, I will tell you in the French that no one has a right to be worshipped except Allah. And the Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of Allah. And if you want to hear an add on, Jesus, the son of Mary, is messenger sent by Allah, not blah, 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 blah. That is there. It's a part of the shahadat. It's there. One day I said that somebody cornered me. You said something wasn't wrong. But go you will see the hadith of the Prophet. So I mean, anyone who testified that no one is worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad is a messenger. And Jesus, the son of Mary, is a messenger of Allah. Not the son of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kalimatullah. And you will be rewarded with the Jannah for saying that. So, so it's good sometimes to add that into the shahada of the people in this country. Because that is the main thing. A brother believes, he said he believes in Allah. Five, ten years after he still believes that the Jesus is... All right. So add this part into it. Then inshallah we'll stop here. We went over the time. But however, <clears throat> the Prophet says, the minute you declare your shahada, all of your previous sins will be forgiven. And those group of people, they will be rewarded twice, doubles, right? Those who had another faith, then after they heard the Islam, they upgraded into Islam. So you will be rewarded for being a Christian, and you will be rewarded also for being a Muslim. So you ain't got nothing to lose. It's a win-win situation, all right? You're just upgrading it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, may Allah guide us, may Allah give us a better understanding, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to preserve our deen for us. And subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik nashara la ilaha illa anta nasta'afirika wa natubu ilaykumu ila salatikum. Ya rahamukum Allah. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, Hayya ala as-salah, Hayya ala al-falah, Qad qamat as-salat wa qad qamat as-salah, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, la ilaha illa Allah. Make your life straight and get close to one another. You can move in, inshallah. I think we have some more room. But there, by the door is full, but inside, so you can move up there. There's those of you that are that, by that bookcase there, you can move in, inshallah. A lot of lines in that side or this side, the right hand side, are not complete. So, Please help us, inshallah. We'll be done with it in five minutes or so, inshallah. We have a lot of brothers and sisters moving, inshallah, that head out for height. May Allah accept the height from them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it a reason for the sins to be forgiving. And also we have a lot of brothers and sisters who has returned to Allah. We ask Allah to forgive them, to have a mercy on them, to elevate their status in Jannah to for those. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make ourselves good before our days to come. Allahumma amin. We're good, inshallah. See, we still have it. Madam Musa? Yeah. All right. You're not there. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah wa bihamdi wa tabaraka ismuka tarajadika wa la ilaha wa ilaha. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم وصراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا 
الضالين آمين والفجر وليال عشر والشفي والوتر والليل إذا يسر هل في ذلك قسم لذي حجر ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بعاد إرم ذات العماد التي لم يخلق مثلها في البلاد وثمود الذين جابوا الصخر بالواد وفرعون ذي الأوتاد الذين طغوا في البلاد فأكثروا فيها الفساد فصب عليهم ربك سوط عذاب إن ربك لبالمرصاد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده ربنا لك الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين فأما الإنسان إذا ما ابتلاه ربه فأكرمه ونعمه فيقول ربي أكرما وأما إذا ما ابتلاه فقدر عليه رزقه فيقول ربي أهانا كلا بل لا تكرمون اليتيم ولا تحاضون على طعام المسكين وتأكلون التراث أكلا لما وتحبون المال حبا جما الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده ربنا لك الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله لا إله إلا الله لا شر لا من لا لا من لا في تعالى once again brothers and sisters as you come in yeah so inshallah we pray we have a several brothers they have requested that we ask Allah for for his forgiveness for the the parents that they've lost we ask Allah to forgive all of them to have mercy on them to grant all of them jannah for those we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make ourselves good before our days to come I mean and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the brothers and sisters who have set out to the hajj may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from them and those of us also that are here if we're gonna make it to hajj the deed that we can do for Allah to forgive us for our sin may Allah make them easy for us one of them are sincere tawbah and also five daily salat and there are reason for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive the person and Juma to Juma is a good enough also for Allah to pardon us for all the mistakes that we have done in the, within the week so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all of this easy for us Allahumma ameen and once again keep on talking to the brothers and if anyone who let you know that he wants to take shahada male or female and then if i'm available do it if i'm not please do not put no one on hold for a week simply because you think your mom is not there all right that that's 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 too much of reward to be to be lost because the person could be worshiping allah for a week and anything can happen within that week also the prophet sallallahu way used to be he will put everything on hold and do the shahada but he will not put the shahada on hold for anything all right jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh so the brother says he will not make it for juma but he may come for asr prayer so inshallah if he's here we will give him a shahada and also give him his wife <laughs> <laughs> And, and 